What's up champ, I'm Vince Delmonte of GeneExpressionTraining.com and in this video you are going to learn the four biggest shoulder stability mistakes. So the good news guys is that what I'm about to teach you is very simple. While this might appear a complicated topic, I think it's only complicated because a lot of people have made it complicated by using tons of fancy terms that are unnecessary, all right, that are essentially nonsense. And I want you guys to improve your ability to work out in the gym, to build your body, and we have to first break some bad habits. Now, I want to reassure you guys that I have misinterpreted things over the years, and I think it happens to all of us. It just takes a real man to admit when I think I might have got that wrong. Here's how to do this right. Let's move forward, all right? So a lot of this stuff that you've been taught on shoulder stability comes from the physiotherapy world. It comes from people that are trying to protect the rotator cuff muscles. However, what you'll see from this video, these things that they're intending to do, which are good, are actually causing more harm, all right? A lot of the cues you've heard, like depression, retraction, are things that can work with certain movements, but when you start combining some of these cues with certain movements, you're causing more harm to your joint systems than good, and you're preventing your ability to build your body. So we're gonna look at these four mistakes in the four different categories of upper body movement patterns. All right, so we're gonna be looking at our pressing exercises, our shoulder exercises, so our chest exercises, our shoulder exercises, our retraction exercises, like our horizontal rowing, and our vertical pulling exercises, so our lats. So we're gonna look at all the exercises you're currently doing right now, and we'll tell you what to do and what not to do. All right, let's dive into it. So the over-encompassing message in this video is to stop restricting natural joint motion. All right, so this is our humerus, this is our humerus, <laughs> this is our scapula, and when we move, there is a natural humeral scapular rhythm, okay, depending on the movement, all right? There's a natural participation of these two joint systems, and if they're not moving the way they're intended to move, if you're forcing one to do too much or forcing one to do too little with certain cues, that's when we run into problems. So let's take a very specific look at this. So your first take home message here is to stop restricting natural joint motions, all right? It's your muscles, it's your muscles job to move joints. So if we're thinking about contracting muscle tissue, your body will move properly. All right, and a lot of the other stuff is just unnecessary. It's just causing more risk than benefit, as you'll see, as you'll see right now. So mistake number one we're gonna look at is the cue of depression when we're doing horizontal pushing exercises. So a chest press. All right, so if this is us lying on our back, and this is the natural movement. When we add in the cue of depression, what have we now caused to happen? I've now taken the scapula, I've depressed it, and now I'm trying to create a motion here. Does this look natural? Well, let's find out for ourselves. I want you guys to stand up. Pretend you've got your dumbbell in your hand. Retract your shoulder blades. Now this cue here isn't too bad, as long as it's not done excessively, all right? I prefer just telling you keep your shoulder blades stable, all right? We don't need to excessively retract. And let's try it. Let's, let's excessively retract our shoulder blades and let's try and move. How many of you guys have got some nice healthy joint motion going on right now? I can't even budge. Now I know I'm exaggerating this, but I'm on the end of the continuum that promotes restriction. Is that smart? So now let's think about this. Let's retract and depress. Now try and move. How does that feel? And as you can see from this demo here, me doing the dumbbell chest press, I'm not getting much movement, am I? So try this right now. Retract and depress, and now try your dumbbell shoulder press. It feels god awful. So stop doing that. That's incorrect. It adds no benefit to your ability to produce tension and fatigue and forceful contractions in your muscle, in your chest muscles, if that's what you want to develop. All right, so that's mistake number one. Mistake number two is in the category of vertical pushing movements. So all of our shoulder press movements. Movements that require our shoulder blade to move. If you want to do a shoulder press, this motion here, if you want to get your shoulders short, if you want to get them maximally contracted, your shoulder blades need to move. This is called natural 
humeral scapular rhythm, all right? So if I wanna do this, your shoulder blade needs to move. Let's try doing that movement without it, all right? Or with the cues a lot of people teach. All right, I want you guys to lock down your scapula, lock it down. I want you to even add, a, now let's just start there. Lock it down and try and do a shoulder press. Can't move. Let's try and retract our shoulder blades and now try and do it. How's that feel? Pretty horrible, eh? So as you can see here on the dumbbell shoulder press exercise, when I'm trying to depress my shoulder blade and retract, I've got no movement at all, all right? It just makes no sense. So you can't do your shoulder press exercises without natural movement of the shoulder blade. So this movement is natural. Allow it to happen. All right, that way you can get a good forceful muscle contraction and so that you're not smashing these things up. So let's look what happens with our skeleton when we depress and retract. Sorry, that's protraction. Retract, depress, look. Smashing stuff up against each other. Is this healthy? How do you think your shoulders are gonna feel in a few years from now doing this on a regular basis? Not very good. That's mistake number two. Let's look at mistake number three. We're now gonna look at the category of rowing exercises. So this is called horizontal pulling, all right? So our seated rows, our high rows, our rope rows, whatever version of rowing you're doing, whether it's with a dumbbell or barbell, this all applies. All right, so you'll hear a lot of people say, retract the scapula. Now the retraction of the scapula isn't actually not, it's not, a, it's not too bad because there's still room in there for the joint to move, all right? So I'm okay with a little retraction when we're doing our movements, but we don't need to force it. We don't need to go into an excessive joint motion or you're gonna restrict the ability to contract muscle, all right? Now here's the problem when start, people start adding in the depression cue, all right? So they've added in the retraction, which still creates room for the humerus to move, but now when they add in the depression, let's see how that feels. All right, so our little bit of retraction is natural, but let's try to add some depression and retraction. Ooh, that doesn't feel that great. As you can see here on the horizontal rowing exercise, I'm doing some retraction, that's okay, but when I'm starting to add the depression of the scapula in combination to the retraction, now I'm just creating an unnatural motion and there's no force to even oppose in this direction so it doesn't even make sense to add. Now as you can see when I add just the, a bit of retraction, bit, I stop thinking about the depression of the scapula, now I've got a lot better movement, a lot better contraction. Try it, don't believe me, try it. Depress and retract and try and row. Ooh, oh stuff smashing up against each other right now. This does not feel good. How about you? Doesn't feel good. So why would we do this motion in the gym? All right, so that's mistake number uh, three, that adding a depression component to your horizontal rowing movements. Let's look at our last mistake, and this is mistake number four, and this is for our vertical pulling movements. All right, so we got our vertical pulling movements, our lat pull downs, or our pull ups, all right? I've heard a lot of, I won't name names, the people who add cues to this exercise that don't make any sense, and we're gonna see this for ourselves. So if we wanna pull the weight down or pull our body up, this needs to naturally move. You not see that? That has to move for this movement to occur. If we start adding in depression and too much even retraction, how are you gonna move? How are you gonna produce forceful contractions? You're not. On the lat pull downs here, as you can see, when I'm really focused on keeping the shoulder blade depressed the whole time, and when I'm trying to add retraction, I've got no movement, all right? Now, when I'm just allowing it to naturally move here in the correct way, I've got a lot of range of motion, I got a lot of contraction, it feels really good. Try it yourself, let's try it. Okay, I'm okay with a little bit of depression here because there's still movement here. See, this has happening, so there's still some space for the joints to move but if we do excessive then it's not good right but then if we add the retraction component that's not great at all and let's feel it retract your shoulder blades and try and row oh feels grimy feel it 
retract your shoulder blade, retract your shoulder blade, and now try and pull down. What am I doing? That feels, that feels horrible. Okay, a couple of disclaimers here to wrap up this video. So I understand that everybody's skeleton is different. Okay, I don't know your skeleton, you don't know my skeleton, but the stuff that we just taught is gonna be pretty representative for the majority of people. So some of you will try some of these things and you say, I don't have any issues with this. Some of you will be like, holy cow, I really do feel issues with this. So understand that we're talking about your structure. All right, everybody's structure is slightly different. So some people will be able to get away with some of these cues and they'll say, yeah, Vince, I've been doing these cues for years. They've caused me no issues at all. Okay, well, there's variables involved in this. However, for the majority of people, you do need to understand that you may be causing, likely causing more harm than good because we're more similar than not. All right guys, so let's wrap this video up. So the big take homes here is to stop trying to make your joints move more and stop trying to get your joints to move less. Just allow your joints to move as they're intended to move, naturally. All right, let's get rid of all the fancy, complicated words. I understand a lot of people have to use these words to elevate their status or to try and sound smarter than they actually are. And again, I wanna give you guys a tool. I'm really just trying to help you guys feel this yourself. So when you go to the gym, practice these things. Try and depress, try and retract. Restrict joint motions and see how it feels. All right, force unnatural joint motions and see how it feels. The only thing you should be forcing in the gym is the sensation of a powerful muscle contraction. Let me say that again in a different way. The only thing you should be forcing in the gym is powerful, deep, hard muscle contractions that make your muscles scream, that makes your skin rip, that makes your muscles swell up. That's the only thing you should be forcing in the gym. Let's stop thinking that we're smarter than our body. That's considered ignorance, all right? It's not hard to build a great body, all right? A lot of us, including myself, just have to unlearn a lot of things that we've been taught, and I totally appreciate that because we're all on our own journeys. Nobody knows everything. Even if you've got shredded abs, tons of followers, and have a ton of fancy letters behind your name, a lot of us tend to interpret things incorrectly. It takes a real man to admit when they're wrong. And it takes a real man to say, hey, I might have misinterpreted that. You're right, that doesn't make a ton of sense. And here's now the right way to do it. All right, this channel here has always been here as a place for us to grow together, for us to evolve. All right, if I ever teach something that might be not optimal and I discover a better way with more understanding and more knowledge and being around smarter people, I'm gonna teach that to you guys. So before we go to the textbooks, I want you to go to the gym tonight and start practicing all of this stuff that we talked about. I want you to practice natural motions, all right? If you wanna do shoulder exercises, you need your shoulder blades to move. If you wanna do high pulley bicep curls, you need your shoulder blades to move, all right? All these awesome exercises in the gym require us to move the way we were intended to move. All right, guys, I think that's it. I could go for a while here, as you know, so let's wrap up. I wanna give you one more resource to help you execute better movements. If your goal is to build muscle tissue, I created a resource called Mass Mechanics. Five hours of how to exercise execution coaching, which will show you the cues to help create forceful muscle contractions, which will in turn move your joints naturally. Everyone's got it backwards. They're setting up the joint positions and then trying to move the muscles. That doesn't make sense. You let the muscles move the joints because that's what muscles do. So we need to learn the cues. Doesn't that make sense? So I got five hours of how to exercise execution coaching. Uh, you can click the link here or the link in the description, massmechanics.com. It's the best investment you'll make into learning how to move properly in the gym, how to create forceful muscle contractions that sculpt your body, that build your metabolism, that help you look amazing that round out your muscles so that they're not flat, so that you have a sculpted physique that turns heads and make you feel proud of yourself when you look in the mirror. All right, so take that step today, massmechanics.com, invest into yourself, all right? Let me know what you guys want me to cover in upcoming videos in the comment section below. Uh, today's video was kind of like the soil for a lot of videos to come. We have to lay the groundwork for a lot of the videos we're about to shoot to make sense, all right? so. Let me know where we can go next, comment section. 
And again, share this video with your friends who may be doing things in the gym with certain cues that are causing more risk than benefit. All right? And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.